Hey, what's up, guys? So welcome to today's training, which is all about breaking free from emotional leading. So emotional leading can affect people on lots of different levels. It can be from completely binging um, over being stressed or sad or upset or having different emotional issues to just kind of simply snack and eat in the evening and you find it really hard to kind of step away from that. Or perhaps you're driving around a car and you always have those packets of jellies and you're constantly dipping into them, even though you're not hungry at all. So today is going to share lots of tips and strategies and different insights in helping you kind of overcome emotional eating and helping you kind of achieve that sustainable, better relationship with food. And um, we're going to dive into lots of different tips and tools to help you progress, help you create some actionable steps that you can start to implement today to help you move forward and overcome emotional eating. So to kick it off, we're going to try and focus on having a better understanding about emotional eating. And emotional eating is something that many of us can relate to. And it's simply the act of turning to food, not on a physical hunger, but more um, as a response to emotions. And it's crucial to recognize that this behavior, while, um, while it does offer kind of a temporary relief, but can often carry long-term consequences, especially when it comes to overall well-being and if you're someone that wants to lose weight. So what exactly triggers emotional eating? So it can be stress, boredom, loneliness, sadness, celebrations, social pressure. And that's just some of the common things that people will be kind of going through that um, elicits emotional eating. And I suppose these emotions then can lead us down a path where food becomes a comfort escape. And the cycle, if left unchecked, can become a significant obstacle in achieving sustainable weight loss. So today we're going to unravel the complexities of emotional eating, have a better understanding about how it's impacting our lives. And most importantly, we're going to explore different strategies to help you break free from um, the grip of emotional eating. And so the impact of emotional eating, and it's going to impact us physically, and it's also going to impact us emotionally. So now we've kind of explored um, what emotional eating is and the common triggers. So we're going to kind of dive into now um, about the impact that can have for both for both physical and emotional well-being. So I suppose the physical consequences is that emotional eating often leads to more than just uh, momentary indulgence. It can contribute towards weight gain. In some cases, it can even lead towards obesity. So consuming excess calories beyond what our body needs creates that cycle and it's so it can be really challenging to break and this not only affects our physical health but also can impact our own self-esteem and our body image and obviously how we see ourselves in the mirror and then the other side of that is going to be emotional consequences so just as equally as important to emotional um so equally important like emotional consequences then um, of relying on food to cope with feelings it can create that cycle of guilt and shame uh, perpetuating the need for comfort through eating um, and then this emotional roller coaster can hinder overall quality of life affecting relationships and work our ability to enjoy life and obviously how we kind of see ourselves in the mirror as well and um, so what we need to do to break um, the cycle um, for long-term well-being and really when we want to try and look at breaking that cycle and the good news is is that we can break that cycle and it just really comes down to understanding the impact of emotional eating on our physical and emotional selves. And once we do that, we can then begin the journey towards long-term well-being. And it's about making conscious choices, building healthier habits, and finding alternative ways to cope with our emotions. So what we're going to dive into next is going to be um, some step-by-step -step strategies. And some, uh, so we're going to go through like self-reflection, mindful eating, and then building a support system. So to kick it off anyway with self-reflection, and this is a powerful tool for helping overcome emotional eating. And it involves taking the time to understand your emotions, your eating patterns, and the triggers that lead to emotional eating. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna break down each of the key components um, to um, emotional eating, and obviously through self-reflection as well. So the first part is going to be journaling emotions and eating patterns. So journaling emotions, eating patterns allows you to develop a deeper awareness of your relationship with food by documenting feelings before, during, and after meals. 
So it allows you to identify patterns that may be linked to emotional eating. And it's like a shining light on the connection between your emotional state and your eating habits. So a simple tip here would be consider keeping a diary or some sort of journal. So that's the first thing you want to be doing is get yourself a journal so you can actually start um, the process of um, documenting how you're feeling um, tr uh, before, during and after meals. And this is obviously a place where you can actually record your emotions, what you ate, your circumstances surrounding the meals. And this practice can help uncover trends and help you recognize emotional triggers. So then identifying triggers is the second crucial aspect to self-reflection. So triggers are events, emotions or situations that prompt the desire to eat emotionally. And by pinpointing these triggers, you can gain insight into specific challenges that you need to address especially on your journey to overcoming emotional eating. And as you journal your emotions and eating patterns, you also, also want to pay a close attention to reoccurring themes. So what situations or emotions constantly lead to emotional eating? So is there specific things that keep popping up um, and making sure that you're documenting them so that you can uh, be more aware of them then in the future moving forward? Um, and obviously identifying these triggers is a significant step towards breaking that cycle. The next part as well with this is going to be uh, mindful eating. And this involves cultivating a heightened awareness of your eating habits and distinguishing between physical hunger and actual emotional hunger. So first off, we um, have uh, recognizing physical hunger versus emotional hunger. And physical hunger typically develops gradually, while emotional hunger tends to arise suddenly and is often linked to specific emotions. So learning to differentiate between the two is key to making more conscious food choices. And before reaching for a snack, ask yourself, are you physically hungry or is there an emotional trigger prompting you the desire to eat whatever it is that you have? And this simply um, uh, can be a powerful tool in breaking the cycle again of emotional eating. Um, next up then we have incorporating mindful eating practices to help savor the experience of eating and fosters a healthier relationship with food. So during meals, try to eat without distractions, turn off the TV, put away your phone, focus on the sensory experience of eating and pay attention to stuff like the taste, the texture, the smell of your food, and additionally pause between bites, allowing yourself to enjoy each moment. The next part then is all around building a support system. So the third, the third strategy here is, like I said, building a support system, and it's about surrounding yourself with understanding individuals seeking professional guidance um, can be also instrumental in your journey. So the first part there is surrounding yourself with understanding in individuals, and that's simply having a support network um, when overcoming challenges and emotional eating um, and help having all that people there to actually help you progress and move forward. So surrounding yourself with understanding individuals who offer encouragement, empathy, and non-judgmental judgmental support can make a massive difference. So what you simply need to be doing is kind of sharing your journey with friends, family, or individuals who understand your goals, and having that support system um, provide accountability and motivation, especially during kind of challenging times. Um, also as well, you could seek professional guidance. So in addition to, addition to your support network, having, uh, I suppose, like professional guidance can offer like a specialized assistance tailored towards your unique uh, situation. And like if you find a, uh, emotional eating is significantly impacting your well-being, consider reaching out to someone like, say, a counselor to see if there's any underlying issues that need to be worked on. Um, obviously, because they can provide more of a personalized strategies to help support you, navigate you and help you overcome whatever emotions that are kind of triggering at a deeper level, which is obviously then leading towards your emotional eating. So working on those triggers at a deeper level allows you to kind of peel back the onions, get deeper into it and work on what is actually really triggering things at that much deeper level. Um, so what we're going to do now is quickly just recap on what we've been through so far. So we went through six strategies that can that you can be incorporating um, on your day to day basis to help you overcome emotional eating. So the very first one is journaling emotions and eating patterns. So daily journal uh, record, daily journaling and recording emotions, meals and circumstances. This will illuminate the connection between emotions and eating habits. 
Next then was identifying triggers. So recognize patterns by analyzing reoccurring emotional themes, pinpoint specific triggers that prompt emotional eating. Make sure to take notes in your journal uh, when you recognize these obviously as well to kind of create more awareness for yourself. Then number three was mindful eating. And this was recognizing physical hunger versus emotional hunger. So we wanna pause, um, assess whether we're hungry or, or, or is this just an emotional feeling coming up to make us want to eat. Um, next then was incorporating mindful eating. So eat without distractions to enhance sensory experience, pause between bites, savoring each moment um, of your eating process. Um, number five then was building a support system. So surrounding yourself with understanding individuals, sharing your journey with supportive friends and family, um, seek encouragement, um, and obviously from a support network that will, that will be non-judgmental as well, will be vital in helping you progress and move forward. Um, number six then was basically, we touched on seeking professional guidance where it's from a, someone like um, a counselor, psychotherapist, someone like that, that can actually help you at a much deeper level. So what we're going to do now is going to go through some practical exercises. So these are the things that you can start to implement today, things that you can really start and get focused on and help yourself, help you make a plan then and moving forward. So we're going to dive into the first practice, practical exercise, which is emotion journaling. So this is something obviously you're going to need to have a journal ready. So if you don't have one, this is something that you want to get yourself. Um, so this exercise can be a transformative tool in your journey to overcome emotional eating as it's a process where you're going to document emotions associated with your eating behaviors. So we're just going to break this part down step by step. So again, make sure you're taking notes on this um, because it's something that can massively help you progress and move forward. So guidance on documenting emotions and eating behaviors. The first step in emotional journaling is to actively observe and record your emotions in relation to your eating habits. So each time you eat, take a moment to reflect on your emotional state. Ask yourself questions like, how am I feeling right now? Or what emotions might be influencing my desire to eat? So there are things that you want to really kind of seep in and ask yourself those questions before you start eating. And use descriptive language to articulate your emotions. Like, are you feeling stressed, anxious, happy, sad, upset? And be honest with yourself. Jot down these emotions in your journal. Um, it's about creating that record that provides insight into emotional landscapes surrounding your meals. Um, next then is about encouraging regular self-reflection. So the second aspect of this exercise is the encouragement of self-regular reflection. And at the end of the day, like consistency is key to unlocking patterns and gaining a deeper understanding of your relationship with food and your emotions. So set aside a dedicated time each day to review your emotions journal. Look for patterns or trends that emerge over time. Um, are there specific situations, times of day, or emotions that constantly uh, precede emotional eating episodes? So regularly, regular self-reflection allows you to track your progress and make informed adjustments to your strategies. Um, so emotional journaling is a powerful tool that brings awareness to the connection between your emotions and your eating behaviors. It empowers you to make conscious choices and develop a healthier relationship with your food. Remember, this is a personal journey and each entry into the journal is a step towards greater self-understanding. So quick task for you in, it's just a simple question is, when are you committed to start this journey? So obviously you want to be saying that you're going to start this journey today. So reflect on what we just went through there. If you need to pause this, go back, play it again, go through it, take some more notes and you just need to be committed to yourself starting that um, very first exercise of self-reflection. Cool. So now we're going to move into another practical exercise, and this is known as Mindful Bites. Um, this exercise is a step-by-step -step guide designed to help you incorporate mindfulness into your eating routine. So the first step in Mindful Bites exercise is to approach your meal with intention and presence. As you sit down to, uh, sit down to eat, take a moment to appreciate the colors, textures, and the aromas of your food. So first off, set the scene. Start by creating a conductive environment for your meal. Choose a quiet space, free from distractions. Turn off the TV, put away your phone. Allow yourself to focus entirely on the experience of eating. 
Um, next up, then we're going to connect with our food. So as you look at your plate, take a moment to connect with your food. Notice the colors, the shapes, the arrangement of the items on the plate. And the simple act, this simple act can help you appreciate the visual aspect of your meal so much more. Um, next up then, we want to focus on engaging your senses. So take a deep inhale, savor the aromas um, emanating from your food, and then notice any natural sense that arise. Allow your senses to come alive in anticipation of the experience of ahead of eating that food. Number four, to the, uh, the fourth part to this then is take small mindful bites. So with each bite, focus on savoring the flavors, chew slowly and deliberately, paying attention to the taste, the texture of each and every bite. Um, this intentional chewing process enhances the overall sensory experience. Um, so again, this is something that we need to start practicing daily with each and every meal. So as we go through these steps, I encourage you to practice the mindful bites exercise during your meals. It's about cultivating a habit of mindful eating where each bite becomes an opportunity to reconnect with the present moment and appreciate the nourishment of your food. So start with one meal a day and gradually incorporate mindfulness into more of your eating moments. The goal is not perfection, but progress. And as you practice, observe how you mindfully approach um, influences your relationship with your food and your overall well-being. So Mindful eating is a simple yet impactful practice that can be transforming your relationship with food. And mindful bites is just one way to incorporate mindfulness into your daily routine. So this is just something that you, again, want to be aware of. Don't feel like you have to kind of start today and every single time you eat something, you have to focus on mindfulness. Do it one step at a time. Remember, it does take time to create habits, but being more aware that this is the journey that you want to try and get to, especially if you want to kind of overcome that emotional eating it does take time but if you just do it step by step the more you get into it the easier it will start to become so next practical exercise we're going to focus on is building a support system so um and this exercise is called support network mapping and this aims to help you identify individuals to lean on during challenging times so let's dive into this so the first part in this exercise is really to identify individuals who and form a part of your support network. So these are people you can lean on during challenging times, individuals who provide understanding, encouragement, and a listening ear when needed. So number one, the first part of this is identify your inner circle. So consider your inner circle as people that are friends, family, colleagues, and people that you would feel comfortable sharing your journey with. These are individuals as well that will play a cru crucial role in providing emotional support and understanding on your journey moving forward. The next part of that then is professional support. So um, addition, additionally, consider professionals who can contribute towards your support system. So again, this could be healthcare professionals, psychotherapists, counselors. So again, it depends on where you're at in your journey and how much help you feel you need. Um, because these are obviously people that have the expertise in helping you overcome kind of mental challenges that may really be the, the root cause behind your whole emotional eating journey. Um, so then, obviously, the importance of communication. This is going to be vital with speaking to your support network. So, um, so with, um, with speaking, I suppose, uh, with discussing the importance of open communication, equally important to identifying individuals is the aspect of open communication within your support network. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna explore why this element is key in building a, a strong foundation. So obviously open communication, um, op openly communicating your challenges, victories and feelings with your support network is crucial. And it's gonna foster understanding, provides an outlet for expression and strengthens the bond between you and your supporters. Um, so next up then is establishing expectations. So we want to set clear expectations regarding the type of support you need, whether it's a listening ear, motivational encouragement, kick up the ass, or practical um, assistance. So open communications ensures everyone is on the same page. So as you engage in your support network, um, support network mapping, so this exercise, obviously, remember that it's about building a support system. It's not only going to be a positive for you, but also can have a positive impact on others, especially 
if your support network is on the same journey as you. Um, so what we really want to be doing is sharing your goals, struggles, and successes with your support network. This exercise is about creating a foundation of understanding and encouragement that will propel you forward on your journey to overcoming your emotional eating. So just to finish off on this part, building a support system is a powerful strategy in navigating the challenges over overcoming emotional eating. So take the time to complete the support network mapping exercise and consider how these um, identified individuals can contribute towards your journey. So again, I want you to take pause this video right now and I want you to take some time to write out your list of who you could add into your support system, whether it's friends, family, work colleagues, um, even myself. So again, if you are really struggling with this kind of stuff and you really need that extra help in hand, then feel free to reach out and just please let me know so I can help you help um, support you moving forward at, at whatever level you feel you need that um, extra support. So again, pause the video, take your time, make out a list and let people know that you're on this journey. The more open you are um, with people, the easier it is then to actually going to be able to flip things around and help you progress and move forward. Right, so the most important part is going to be maintaining progress. So it's all good writing stuff down and saying, right, I'm going to do this and do this and this. But unless you actually take that step, get yourself moving forward and actually start to maintain what you're doing, um, it will very quickly fall apart. So that's why this is a really important part that we can focus on maintaining your progress. So as we progress in our journey to overcome emotional eating, it's essential to discuss how um, to maintain the momentum and celebrate victories no matter how small. So let's, what we're going to do now is we're going to explore some tips for long-term success and the importance of celebrating your journey. So remember, the journey to overcoming emotional eating is not a sprint, but a marathon. So it does take time. So first part of this is establishing realistic goals. So if you've not um, done yet, I want you to begin by setting realistic and achievable goals for yourself. Break down your overarching objective into smaller manageable steps. So like focusing on one meal per day to gauge your emotions, mindful eating or even journaling. So pick something that you can start focusing on right now. And that will be your very first step in moving forward. And then you can build on it then from there. So next is next about focusing on sustainable changes. So avoid any quick fixes or extreme measures. Instead, focus on making sustainable changes to your lifestyle. These changes may include adapting a healthier eating habits, incorporating regular exercise, and nurturing your mental well-being. Number three, then, is learning from setbacks. Understand that setbacks are a natural part of any transformative journey. And when facing challenges, view them as opportunities to learn and adjust um, your strategies. The ability to adapt contributes significantly to long-term success. Number four, acknowledge and celebrate every milestone. So recognize and celebrate every milestone, no matter how big or small they are. Um, completing a week of mindful eating, identifying and overcoming a trigger, or constantly applying and cope, a coping mechanism. Each of these is a victory worth acknowledging. So be sure to write them down your wins and reflect on them each and every week, because it will help boost motivation. It will show you that you are actually moving forward and making progress. So next up then is cultivate a positive mindset. So cultivate a positive mindset by appreciating the progress you've made, acknowledge the efforts you've invested and the positive changes you've experienced. So positive outlook can fuel your motivation for that journey ahead. Number six then, build a support environment. So surround yourself with a support environment that acknowledges and celebrates your success. Share your victories with your support network and let their encouragement amplify the joy of each achievement. So as you navigate the path towards overcoming emotional eating, remember that success is not solely defined by the destination, but by the journey itself. Embrace the process, learn from every experience, and celebrate the continuous growth you achieve. So question for you. Uh, what I want you to do is take a moment to reflect on your own journey right now and ask yourself, what small victories have you experienced re uh, recently? And how can you celebrate them? So these are things to kind of think about right now. So even though you may not even have started this journey, you can, you can always think back on other little things that may have helped you move forward already. Maybe you learned to say no to something. Maybe you went to stop in the shop and get a bag of potatoes or a chocolate bar and you stopped yourself and recognized what you were going to do and you stopped yourself. 
So start thinking about these little things. So you're always looking for these little wins to know that you can actually um, take bigger steps moving forward. So in concluding, remember that each step forward, regardless of its size, is a triumph. By establishing realistic goals, focusing on sustainable changes and celebrating small victories, you pave the path for lasting success. You have the ability to achieve all that you want as long as you're willing to put in the work to get there. So conclusion. So as we can, uh, come to the conclusion of our journey to overcome emotional eating, let's take a moment uh, to re recap the key points we've explored together and empower you to take those first steps towards a healthier relationship with food and emotions. So some key tips, uh, key points here. So first off, we started by understanding the intricacies of emotional eating and diving into emotional eating cycle and then exploring three crucial strategies, self-reflection, mindful eating and building a support system. So let's quickly recap on each of them. So self-reflection, uh, which is done through journaling emotions and identifying triggers which allows you to gain insights into the patterns influencing emotional eating. And this self-reflection is a foundational step in breaking that cycle. Uh, the next part then we focused on mindful eating. So incorporating mindful eating practices such as recognizing physical versus emotional hunger and savoring each bite brings a heightened awareness to your relationship with food. Three then was building a support system, which involves identifying individuals in your network and fostering open communication. Your support system plays a pivotal role in providing encouragement and understanding in helping you move forward. Uh, number four, then we went through the practical exercises. So we engage in stuff like emotional journaling, journaling, uh, mindful bites, and encouraging regular self-reflection um, and the integration of mindfulness into your eating habits. So at the end of the day, it's all about long-term success. To ensure long-term success, we discussed the importance of setting realistic goals focusing on sustainable changes, learning from setbacks, and celebrating small victories. Um, so as we finish, um, I want you to kind of feel empowered to take these first next steps moving forward um, to overcoming kind of that emotional eating. Because if you put the practice into play, you will gain so much from it. And at the end of the day, this journey is all about you. And it's about your commitment to self-discovery because it will help you overcome and those, um, that emotional eating that you may be kind of going through right now. Um, so also as well, small progress is progress. So it's all about embracing the concept that small progress is still progress. Celebrate the victories, no matter how big or small they are, and use them as a stepping stones and motivation to help you continue to keep on moving forward. So any questions at all, feel free to reach out for me, especially if you're someone that is struggling with emotional eating right now. If you do need that extra help, if you do need that extra support, make sure to let me know. But hopefully you gained a lot from this. And as I said, it's all about putting things into practice. So if you want to gain the most from this, start with your journal, start with the mindful eating, start with creating that support system and absolutely smash it.